Okay, uh, today we're going to take out a normal single pull breaker out of a panel and install a arc combination arc fault uh, GFCI breaker. And uh, the reason why we're doing this is because of this here. Um, this uh, charging charging unit, whatever this is, the transformer or whatever that for charging your iPhone, iPad. Uh, in my daughter's room, uh, she pulled it out of the receptacle, the plug in the wall, and this is what the thing looked like. So, um, kind of freaked me out a little bit. This p potentially could cause a fire and burn the house down. Now, luckily, this breaker right here, which is the breaker that was feeding the plugs upstairs, um, it tripped a couple times. And um, not realizing why it tripped until I had seen this, um, it made me think that um, I want to put in an arc fault uh, circuit interrupter to uh, protect uh, the circuit. So the difference between a arc fault, which we're calling an AFCI, and a GFCI is that this senses a fault on every um, on every leg of the circuit, the hot, the neutral, and the ground. The GFCI basically just sends senses a fault on the neutral conductor. So um, for the sake of safety uh, for the bedroom, I'm going to put um, this 15 amp uh, arc fault circuit interrupter, interrupter breaker in and that should theoretically, if there's any type of fault on the hot, the neutral, or the ground, it'll open the circuit up and prevent a fire. So uh, in Michigan here, um, these are not required in houses uh, by the uh, Michigan uh, Electrical Code, but consequently the National Electrical Code requires them. So depending on whatever state you're in, um, your panel may look a lot different than this. It may already have these, this type of breaker in the panel. If it doesn't, um, it's something that you may want to consider, uh, you know, with all of the electronic stuff today and these little uh, basically, it's a little transformer burning out and heating up and, and causing this situation right here. So, um, the first thing that you want to do when you do this is, um, if you're not a trained electrician, you want to shut the main breaker off um, to the panel. It, that is still going to leave these two legs hot, but everything from here down uh, will be disconnected. So, like I've said in previous posts, um, I'm a master electrician, so I'm kind of used to uh, dealing with um, hot circuits and things of that sort, so I know what to watch out for. So basically what you're going to have to do is identify which breaker it is, um, pop that breaker out, get it out of there, and you'll see that the new breaker, it's quite a bit bigger, and it comes with this um, pigtail here, which um, I've identified the circuit right here. I have the hot and the neutral. This is going to go to your neutral bar, which is right here in your panel. You'll be able to identify it by either a white wire or um, you'll see the white wires going to it. So this actually goes to your neutral bar and then the neutral from your branch circuit, the one going out to your receptacles or your plugs in your room, is going to land on the silver screw here and then your hot's going to go here. So it's a, it's pretty pretty straightforward. A um, little time and patience and uh, you can make things happen. Now you may have to make some room in here uh, from some of the wires that you have already in the panel because this thing kind of takes up quite, quite a bit of room. So what you want to do is just pop this into place and you may have to wiggle it around a little bit and finagle it to get it in there. Get that into place, which it's already seated on uh, the busway here. So, and you'll see that it uh, it's off. Make make sure that it's off unless you shut your main off. And then uh, proceed on taking this to up to your neutral bar. This would go down to that silver screw that I showed you, and then this lands on the hot part of it, and then you can re-energize your circuit. And that's it.